Welcome back to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. Joining me in the studio, Dave Giesel from the... <laughs> Dave, just say it for me. <laughs> Campaign you... for Liberty. Campaign for Liberty. I don't know why I have that mental block. Every time I, I, I see it in You're my mind... you flashing sign. That's what I need. The Campaign for Liberty here in, uh, in Fairbanks. And also Josh Bennett from Bighorn Enterprises. Uh, gentlemen, uh, we've got all four lines on hold, and there were a couple things you wanted to mention. Too. Yeah, so uh, we got we have the blog, uh, patriotslament.blogspot.com, and we've been putting a couple posts up there every week. We now have an email address. It's patriots, patriotslament, no punctuation, at uh, gmail.com, patriotslament at gmail.com. And we have a YouTube channel. Uh, our YouTube channel is Radio Free Fairbanks, and all of the Patriots, Patriots Lament shows are up there. Um, they're all in four segments, and the segments are all linked together. And I have some uh, some favorited videos that are that are worth watching up there too. So you can catch the show there. And I'm working on getting a podcast so people can just subscribe to the podcast, and um, the new episodes will hit their MP3 player or iPhone. That's very nice. That's right. awesome. You guys ready to go back to the phone, or is there something else? You yeah, want? so one of the other things that was sort of interesting last week, it being a big news week, was uh, the TSA rolled out a new system at the Boston Logan Airport. And this system is a video camera that watches you while the TSA asks you uh, three to four questions. And if the facial recognition software detects um, any sort of negative attitude in your in your facial expressions, they call them micro-expressions, uh, it turns a red light, and then if the red light goes off, they send you through a full-body scanner, and they take you to another room for additional questions. So basically, they're scanning us now for thought crime? Yeah. If you're uncomfortable um, being questioned about stuff that constitutionally no one has the right to question you about, then... Uh, you then obviously must be a criminal. You need to go to the back room and... Yeah. So at what point have we crossed over here? Because I mean that's like right out of Minority Report, that 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 movie with Tom Cruise, the, where basically they were arresting people for crimes they hadn't committed. Yep. Yep. I mean I I don't know. I mean I don't know what's next. I mean that's <laughs> who would have thought? You know seriously, ten years ago, five years ago. Well, not five years ago. No, no. Actually, ten years ago, I'll tell you who would have thought it. it, it uh, yeah. Ron Paul. He was saying, but he was don't, saying, don't, don't do the Patriot, don't, don't do the Patriot Act because this is where it's leading. Yeah. Well, not quite ten years ago because they hadn't had their event to push this. Oh. The Patriot Act was being almost. written. It was almost. being written right now. It was, it was written in the yeah. summer of 2001, um, and then they were just sitting on it, waiting for an event where they knew people would, uh, would bow down to it. So, but I mean, is that's just the height of absurdity. So, I mean, what's the what's the price for safety? It's not even safety. Safety, how, safety from who? So, how, but, we need but, safety from the TSA. But how do we resist that? I mean, we we keep talking about not giving our consent. Well, what do we do? Not fly? Uh, well, you actually have a an interesting story about that too. I do. As a matter of fact, here the uh, there's a startup company, and I'll get you the name of it. It is not operating here in Alaska yet. It's called Plain Red. It's a startup aviation company. They are cashing in on the public backlash against the Transportation Security Administration by offering a subscription-based air travel service that carries only nine passengers at a time, which allows them to bypass the requisite TSA airport procedures. We have that here um, with uh, Frontier. Oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah I encourage said, everyone to use Frontier. We do. So if, but that's to, to fly within Alaska. I mean, yeah. how do you, how do you get out of the that's states? That's a lot of travel within the state, though. I mean, at least there's a start. Give them your business. Everyone should give Frontier Flying Services. If you, if you have to fly to Anchorage, do not go through yeah, the you TSA. Yeah, you don't have to. You just walk right on board. And, you know, what's crazy is I don't think they've ever had a terrorist event happen to them. I don't know how. Wow. You know, seriously, without getting screened, they, they, they'd never had a terrorist use one of the Frontier. Yeah, you can pretty much <laughs> walk right on there with your gun. Wow. Which is odd. No, that's awesome. No, oh, wow. And they're getting some free advertising today. So <laughs> thank you for. This is what you get if you if you yeah. do the right thing. People hear about it and they support you. All right. Do we want to go back to the phones, or is there something we else? We got to give one more outfit some free advertisement. That would be uh, Auto Trim Design. They built a whole bunch of uh, banners for us for the uh, parade a couple weeks ago, and they were awesome. Yeah, those were awesome. They did a fantastic job. Our company, Bighorn Enterprises, we use them for all our graphics and. Uh, truck signs and everything they are the owner there he's awesome he loves liberty family business got his son's working for him and i encourage people i mean 
that gets down to the basics of it. Use people in the area that support liberty. Keep them in business. It's a good thing to do. Can we go to the phones? Yeah. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning. This is Patriots Lament. Good morning. Who's this? Hello. Hello. Who is this? Chuck. Chuck, what's on your mind? Hey, guys. Um, what I'm calling, I'm, I'm not telling, I'm, out, I'm off base here, out of line with your, with your program. Are we having stand down today? Stand down is on the twenty. It's on the twentieth. That is two weeks from today. Okay, thank you. The reason I called is I had someone tell me it was today, and I was sure wanting to go to the stand down. Stand no. Stand down is on the twentieth. You'll hear the ads playing. Uh, so that is for all all veterans no longer in active duty. That's me. All right. Well, I will see you there because I always go to stand down. Okay. Thanks a bunch, guys. You betcha. All right, 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? That must be me. It might be you. Depends on who's calling. It must be. I didn't hear your uh, beeper. There is no beep. What's your name? Uh, my name's Mark, sir. Uh, I'm honored to be in such a gust company. Uh, David, I like your uh, vocabulary. You mentioned uh, you're of the Austrian School of Economics. Could you explain to me the difference between Keynesian economics and the Austrian School? Sure. Um, the basic difference is the business cycle theories between the two schools. So Keynesianism is the belief that when there's a uh, recession, it, well, it's first the belief that recessions and and uh, booms, uh, economic booms happen just magically, right? There's no force behind it. And it's the belief that when there is a recession, the government has to step in and spend the extra money that's not being spent by consumers and, and businesses who are paying down debt. And, of course, the Austrian school has what's called Austrian business cycle theory, which supposes that first um, the boom and the bust, the boom is caused by a bunch of cheap money issued by a central bank. So like when the Federal Reserve takes interest rates to zero or pushes them down, uh, low risk money flows into the markets. And so people spend it because there's no risk. It's like getting a thousand bucks before you enter a casino. You know, you're going to you're going to blow it. And then, of course, that leads to a bust because you have all these misallocated resources, people invested in bad things. And the Austrians say that in the bust, since you have all this debt and bad investment, the only way to get out of the bust is to go through bankruptcies where bad investments are liquidated and good investments change hands to investors who have, who have saved their money and investors who will manage a company um, better. And so Keynesianism is basically spend, spend, spend. You know, we got into a, a problem because of debt. Uh, so let's go deeper into debt, and the Austrian business cycle theory basically says that if you get into a problem because of debt and malinvestment, you have to liquidate the bad investments and liquidate the debt, and that's the only way you get back to zero. Does that imp- does that that applies to governments as well? Yeah, it apply it applies on all scales of the economy. The Keynesians suppose that uh, macroeconomics, as they call it, which is the economy at large, right, is different from microeconomics, which is your personal finances. But, of course, that doesn't make sense because the macro economy, the whole economy, is just made up of individuals, right? The, the big economy is made up of all of us individuals acting um, however we will. And so it's just a reflection of how individuals behave, whereas the Austrian theory says, you know, this applies to all levels of the economy. Well, and that, that, I, go ahead, go ahead, caller. I, I concur, sir, and thank you. That was very cogent of you. Uh, what can I say? Um, money is to uh, a country like blood is to your body. You all have a good day. Thank you. Thank you very yeah, much for you. the call. You know, I, I think it's important that you, you point out the, the logic behind that, Dave, because uh, one of the issues here is that if you suspend logic, then anything is possible and you will believe anything. You know, you, you will believe that you can get out of debt by going into more debt. Right. And you, you will believe that you can uh, promote freedom by restricting freedom. You'll believe that electing a politician will make a difference. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> he always throws that in there. You know, uh, uh, you know, while we're while we're talking about you know the economy and and uh, you know the individual and the the larger the larger economy being a reflection of that, uh, we actually have some some interesting borough stuff relating yeah, to ahead. the economy. Yeah, I think we'll start that out with uh, Golden Valley Electric and Flint Hills have decided to do their own. Gas trucking plan. Wait, isn't that we, we what we just spent money on the borough side to, to give government support to some other people? Have we it? spent the money yet? Or are they just we, allocated it? We allocated three hundred thousand dollars. I would to, say to give it back. That. Give the money back. So yes. wait, so if you're saying that somebody is doing it on their own in the private, that the government doesn't have to spend money? 
Yeah, I bet that uh, GVA and Flint Hills didn't spend any $300,000 to get it figured out either. And they probably figured out the most efficient way for them to do it instead of the way that scratches the most friends' backs. And peels off the most public money and puts it in people's pockets. Right. You know, if we took that $300,000 back and instead of just putting it back into the coffers, we treat it as already spent and sent it as a refund to the tarot, the borough taxpayers. <laughs> Send it back to the state. Tell them they don't want their stinking money. <laughs> All right. Uh, or well, their stinking rules that go along with it. Uh, you know, this whole thing with these studies, it boggles my mind. You were talking about them last week on Problem Corner. We spend hundreds of thousands of dollars, public money, which is taken from the private people, on studies. They just give it to... Yeah, probably, uh, mil- probably in the millions yeah. if you added them all up, right? They just give it away. For it to do a study. Why don't they put those studies, quote unquote, out to bid? Because then, let's just say, well, we have $300,000 to study a trucking gas plan. Let's see if the private market out there has any ideas of how they could do this study for less than $300,000. I bet it would come in much less, and then you'd have money left over, which is mind boggling. And it wouldn't go to the right people, it would go to the lowest bidder, but you'd still, I know we'd get a better result because the last time we spent. 140 some odd thousand dollars and we didn't even get a report <laughs> right you got a like a preliminary that worked study. out really good yeah well that goes you know that goes to the whole borough budget we have some uh info on that i mean the the total borough budget is uh it was just coming out of last night's meeting last, or uh, thursday night's meeting was it when when was this i think it's two i don't remember a couple of weeks ago okay um so it's 141 million is the 2011 budget. So 46 million of that is schools. So if you pull schools out of that, that leaves you with, um, you know, 95 million. And so the borough, there's there's this myth, you know, when you talk about cutting borough taxes, people go, well, I like good roads and I like having police and I like having fire coverage. That's, the, the, the borough ass- doesn't have any of those Essential powers. services, right. And so the borough has, besides schools, the borough, you know, steals $95 million. And what are the essential services that they provide? Um, Library, library, hospital, not exercised, right? Garbage and solid waste, parks and rec, animal control, um, fireworks control. And then there's this one down here, economic development, right? So that's the fun catch-all where most of that $95 million gets flushed. What is economic development? Economic development is funneling taxpayer money to favored interests to do gas line studies that the private sector has already done. Yep. I mean, just as an example. And economic development should be done by people participating in the economy because they're the ones who know where the inefficiencies in the economy are and where they can make money. I know one of the inefficiencies in the economy, and it's the building across the (laughs) river over there. And And I would love to to get a a non-borough grant to study uh, what its economic impact is on the taxpayer when it pilfers us every year and takes money that we would otherwise spend in the way that we want in our own community. Well, 